This one's about harboring the undesirables in prison, man. Remember, harboring the undesirables in prison. All right. Hi guys, welcome to Platinum Cuisines. We're located on the North Island in Freeport. Tune in to Unique Mecca Audio. All right, you know what it is. <laughs> Unique Mecca Audio, man. You know, check this out. I'm gonna tell you about harboring the undesirables in prison. You know, harboring the undesirables in prison. The undesirables is those that told cooperated with the government or whatever. You know what I mean? So this is for the youth. This is letting you know how you'll be treated when you go on the inside. You know what I mean? Some people might like it. You know what I mean? But you know, the real, the real ones will understand that it's crap. <clears throat> now, I'm in Allenwood. Uh, 1999. I get on the compound. I just come out of ADX after, you know, leaving Lewisburg, you know. So now I'm in Allenwood and, you know, you got the Muslim car, you know, no disrespect to the Muslims, you know what I mean? But just letting you know what it is. You know, the Muslims have a belief that no one could judge you but Allah, you know? So therefore, this is where, you know, the feds, when you get locked up, the prosecutors, you know, a young man that uh, was on the compound with, it was a couple of them. So I'm going to tell you about a couple of different ones. This one was from Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia. You know, it was no good, straight rat, big time rat. He telling on people, he going back regular. And he come there and he joined the Muslim call. When he joined the Muslim call, the imam put him under the wing. He gave him his shahada. You know what I mean? He said he wanted, you know, uh, repent for, you know, his sins of, you know, telling on his brothers. So the brother gave him his shahada. And he did. And he learned al-fatiha. And, you know, he's making his prayer. And he's going to Juma every week. And he's doing what he got to do. And he's a known rat. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, everybody let each car deal with their own issues, like I said before. You know what I mean? So... He joins the Muslim call because the prosecutor told him, you know what I mean? All right, you told all you got to do when you go in prison is join the Muslim call. Yeah, that's the way they tell him. When you go to prison, join the Muslim call and you'll be all right. So he comes, he joins the Muslim call. The imam put him under the wing and, you know, the kid got money, you know? So, you know, of course he's being soft pressed out his money now. So he joins the Muslim call and every time it's store day, the kid go to the store and he spent half his money you know, buying food for the Sakat. The Sakat is, you know, where you put the, you know, uh, you donate to, 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 to the cause for the brothers that don't have it. So if one of the Muslim brothers don't have toothpaste, don't have, you know, soup, something to eat, you know what I mean? Sweat soup, whatever he need, you go in the Sakat and you take it out and you give it to the brothers and make sure everybody all right. So every week this kid would spend half his money. I think the limit was like, 280 something like that call it 300 dollars so he spent 150 dollars putting food and you know whatever is needed that they give him on the list when he go to commissary to you know look out for the brothers that don't have nothing so the brother did this for about six months you know what i mean everybody know he's a rat dude from virginia coming they saying yo that dude a rat he down there he telling on everybody and all fuck da 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 you know what i mean but he's in a muslim car so being that he in a muslim car ain't nobody really you know say nothing they letting the muslims hang uh, handle it but you know nobody's feeling it you know what i mean so there's muslims in the car now that is on some now nah, we don't want no rats in here you know what i mean but the imam he break it down and he take it to the soon and he let them know that only a, a law could judge us and if you want to repent for your sins you come to the law and let them know you know what i mean that you know you repenting and you know you let the law handle it you know what i mean instead of you handling on this earthly plane <clears throat> Or this prison plane, you know? So dude come and he been buying food for him. He he done spent, you know what I mean? He done spent over a G in the six months. You understand what I'm saying? Because not only is he doing that, he's giving them stamps. They might go to him, they need 20 books, 40 books, and he putting stamps in every week. He going to commissary and he making sure everybody eat. So while he doing that now, the must uh the Iman holding them down. But, you know, a lot of brothers ain't feeling it. So, of course, on the compound, they saying that the Muslims is harboring rats. You know what I mean? Because they allowed them in the car and the Virginia car wouldn't even, you know, deal with them. And the, 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 the Virginia car really wanted to punish them. 
You know what I mean? Because like I said, you know, you ratting, you come into prison, and you a known rat, they put that knife in you in the penitentiary. Bottom line, they put the knife in you and run you up top. So, you know, he being protected by the Iman, right? So now, six months later, the kid disappears. So everybody wondering where he at. He come back about three, four months later, and he got a brand new pair of Jordans. To have Jordans on the compound, it's like, you know, it's like having a pair of gators, you know, endangered species on your feet, you know, to have them joints. So he come back with some new Jordans, whatever they got out. So everybody want to buy the Jordans, you know, Jordans in there go for about a G. You know what I mean? Easy, you know. And at this time, Jordans was like a buck and change, if that. So he come back with the new Jordans. He come back with a new, you know, uh, uh, religious piece. And, you know, you know, young boy, he about 27, 26, 25, you know. So he come back, he a little fly dude. And, you know, he got his little waves and, you know, uniform creased up. And he acting like, you know. Like, 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 he, he, like he a man, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he a rat, you know what I mean? So he come back and he, he flossing. So while he flossing, dudes trying to get at him. Dudes want to rob him for his sneakers, rob him for his chain and everything, but the Iman holding him down and he keep going to the commissary, bring back big bags of grocery. They give you laundry bags. You know, you put your laundry in, that's what you take to the commissary. He come with these big laundry bags over his back and he take it right to the Iman cell. Dudes in there dead broke and they watching him take this big bag of food straight to the Iman cell. So dudes in their feelings like, man, I can't believe this rat sitting here surviving and I'm hungry, I ain't got nothing to eat. And, you know, he and these Muslims holding them down. This is how the brothers is thinking. They not having it, you know, not having it, not feeling it, none of that. So he come back with some new Jordans. So now the talk is, oh, he just went back. I talked to my peoples in Norfolk, they saying, and, you know, he, he went and tore off such and such. He got three dudes life sentences. You know what I mean? So dudes really want to get at him, you know? So dudes go to the Iman and like, yo, come on, how you harboring this dude? You know, he a rat. And he's like, nah, blah, blah, blah. You know, he re repenting for his sins. Yeah, but he just went back and told. You know what I mean? So how's he repenting when he's still telling all people? But, you know, the Iman was you know, reaping the benefits of what he could get from them. You know what I mean? But the other brothers, you know, the Muslim brothers, they not feeling it, but you got to go with the Iman say because it's structured. So he sit there and, you know, the Iman go to him, get 20 books, 40 books, 50 books. You know what I mean? That's $100, $200, 250 You know what I mean? I mean, randomly, like every couple of days because the kid had money, you know? So uh, everybody wondering how this dude got money and he been in the prison all this time. You know what I mean? Come to find out, the feds, when he go back and testify, he gets paid to get somebody a life sentence, and he also gets a time cut. You know what I mean? So you youngins listen to this. So he also gets a time cut. So another two months go by, he disappear again. He come back with another pair of Jordans. You know, commissary fat. He hit the Iman off with a little 50 books, 200 books. He go to commissary, he buying food, dudes in their feelings. You understand what I'm saying? The Virginia D dudes want to get at him, but they ain't trying to go against the Muslim car. No disrespect to the Virginia car, but like I said, they not trying to go up against the Muslim car. Just keeping it 100. But like I said, the Muslims in the car, they not feeling it. But under the sooner, you know what I mean? If a dude come or whatever, but this dude keep going back. You understand what I'm saying? So this keep going on. So then next thing you know, it's another dude now, you know, named uh, 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 from North Carolina. You know what I mean? He's from North Carolina. He was doing the same thing. He going back every couple of months. He telling, coming back with new Jordans, da 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 But, you know, but he's not down with the Muslim car. But, you know what I mean? He got some wolves holding him down. So he paying the wolves off to stay. So when he come, every time he go to commissary, of course, he's spending half his money and he's sending them 500 on the books. You know what I mean? Da, da, da. So when dude saying, yo, that dude just went back to North Carolina and told. Dude is like, man, nah, he all right. I got him. I got him. You know what I mean? But everybody know that he working him. You know what I mean? So being that he ain't got no, you know, dudes ain't got no uh, uh, commissary. You know what I mean? They, 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 you know, they allowing this to happen. You know what I mean? And for him to feed them and go get the thing. And they making sure nobody get at him. So they keeping the wolves off him. You know what I mean? So they got them under the wing. So this is how they treat the brothers. You know what I mean? That's ratting in the jail in order for them to stay on the compound amongst the wolves. Like the prosecutors say, you join the Muslims and they're going to protect you. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of brothers, you know, shied back from being uh, taking their shahada, you know, back in the, in the 90s, in the, uh, 
you know, uh, early 2000s. Cause they was like, nah, I'm not gonna be no Muslim because y'all harboring rats. You understand? And then of course the brother was letting him know no only Allah could judge you, da da da. But this kid keep going back. So I guess he go back, he come back, and he said he want to repent for the, repent for the dude he got a life sentence yesterday. You know what I mean? Three months later he do it again and he come back and he want to repent for the dudes he just got another life sentence for. And this been going back and forth. But the North Carolina dude, they must have been getting at least a G. And you know the thousand dollars is in the penitentiary. You know what I mean? He hitting off the wolves with like a G and they keeping all the other wolves up off him. And, you know, he gambling and, he, you know, and he's surviving. So, you know, dudes want to get at him, but they ain't trying to go against the wolves because the wolves let the other wolves know, you look, that's my Vic. You know what I mean? That's my Vic. Let me handle this. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So now, if you don't like that, you got to go with the wolf. You know what I mean? Because we know the sheep, which is the rat, he ain't, he ain't going to fight for nothing. So he stays up under the, you know, under the wolf. So he come to the yard, he walk in the track with the wolf, he's sitting down, every day he come out, he go talk to the wolf, so everybody see him talking to the big bag wolf, then he go sit at the poker table. But that's the routine, he come out, talk to the wolf, take a couple of laps, break him off with a, you know, a little 20, 40 books, and then he go sit down, he go gamble, and then the wolf tell him, yo, send my girl 500, he sends her 500. You know what I mean? And that's how they treat the dudes that's telling. So don't say that I didn't tell you how this thing go down. You know what I mean? No disrespect to nobody, no disrespect to the wolves, no disrespect to the Muslim call. So now, this goes on and on. You know what I mean? So then out of nowhere, dudes get tired of it. Dude goes back to North Carolina and tells again. You know what I mean? The other dude goes back and he tells. So while he gone, everybody's in the wolf's ear, in the Iman ear, saying, yo, you the only one eating. Let us eat off this dude. You understand what I'm saying? So the Iman let them know, look, every time we bring commissary in here, when you come in here, you ain't got no soap or toothpaste or zoom zoom and wham whams, and I feed you, that's coming from him. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, I know the first thing y'all saying is, but damn, you know, because me, myself, I'm not going to take no food from a rat. You know what I mean? If I'm starving, I'm not going to take no food from a rat. Let's get that straight. A rat can't feed me nothing. You know what I mean? So, you know, just what it is. But you got certain brothers that, you know what I mean, they doing bad and they just, you know, they just suck it up because I guess they belly aching them bad enough. Because I know, you know, if you ever been hungry, you know, where, where, you, where, where your belly to your back, if you're so hungry, you know what I mean? Where you start swallowing your spit. You know, I'm talking about dudes talking about uh, they, they grew up eating, you know, uh, whisk sandwiches. Try to grow up eating spit. You know what I mean? You hungry and you get a good glob of spit in your mouth and you swallow it and your stomach feel that liquid going down and you feel like, oh man, Whew, that'll hold me for a minute. You know what I mean? But it's dudes that got pride that wouldn't take nothing from them. So, you know, but you don't go against the Iman because like I said, it's structure. You know what I mean? And, you know, you could go against the wolf, but you know, you already got to do what you got to do and, you know, it is what it is. So they both go and they come back. So now when they come back, you know, a couple of wolves push up on the Virginia dude that's a Muslim. They tell him, look, I'm getting ready to buck the Iman and shut this whole compound down. And the first thing I'm going to do is stab you. And whatever the Muslims do, they're going to do. So you need to start giving me $300 a week. You know what I mean? Dude starts sending them $300 a week. Other dudes heard that he's sending them $300 a week. So they want a piece of that. Everybody want a piece of that. So about five dudes hitting him up. He's sending fifteen hundred a week, but he going back getting. You know, I mean, these dudes getting twenty, thirty, forty thousand for testifying, getting dudes locked up. So now the dude from North Carolina come back, and his wolf ain't on the compound. So they go to him and tell him, "Yo, man, I want seven hundred dollars a month." You know what I mean? So he's sending the money. You know what I mean? So they, the, the wolf breaking it off with his little team, and they let them know, "Yo, we got him under the wing." And this goes on on the compound, and other people notice and they watching this. You know what I mean? But that's how, you know what I mean? They have to pay their way to stay. You know what I mean? Because even the government do it. You got certain situations like my man Delroy Uzi. You know what I mean? Uh, in ADX. You know what I mean? Uh, Delroy Uzi, he in ADX. The judge sentenced him where he got to pay $1,800 a month in order to live in prison. So he's been paying $1,800 a month, you know what I mean, on a fine to pay for his own stay in the Federal Bureau of Prison because he got caught with a RICO 
And with a RICO, they can charge you and make you pay for your stay based on you have money. You know what I mean? So, and if you don't have the money, they just take it and they keep subtracting and subtracting. And then when you get out of prison, if you ever get out of prison, you owe that money. I guess if you die, they might go to your kids and tell them you owe this money because your father did all this time in jail and didn't pay us the $1,800 a month. But that's how crazy this is. I'm just telling you all different intricacies of how the prison system works. It ain't nothing nice. You know what I mean? But anyway... So he breaking the dudes off with a little money every month, you know what I mean? So then now, out of nowhere, you know, one of his homeboys come in and he said, man, I don't care nothing about no wolf. That nigga told on my man, you know what I mean? So the dude, he sat there, he come outside, you know, the rat, you know, he come out, he walk with the wolves, you know what I mean? And then, you know, break them off with their little books of stamps and then he go sit at the poker table. He know he got the wolves out there to watch his back while he on the table. But while he on the table, one of his homies came that wasn't no joke, you know what I mean, from um, Carolina. And then, of, of course, an aggressive wolf came from, you know, Norfolk, and the two of them got together because that's considered as, you know, the dirty south. But they do call Virginia a part of the DMV, you know what I mean? Um, that, 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 that's the uh, D.C., uh, uh, Maryland, and Virginia. That's the coalition. That's the car, the DMV. So dude come, and you know, North Carolina is considered as a part of the dirty south. You know what I mean? A dude come from the dirty south ain't having it. And the dude from, uh, from DMV, from Virginia, came that he wasn't having it. You know what I mean? So the, the main wolf was in the shoe for the North Carolina dude. And the imam was kind of tired of everybody on him about you harboring this rat. The dude done been back five, six times. Told on all kinds of dudes. He keep coming back and you keep allowing him to live. You understand what I'm saying? So now, the two of them like to gamble. I don't know what it is, but the rats like to gamble. So the rats out there, they gambling at the table. And uh, as soon as they call the move and it's time to go in, the Virginia car moved on the uh, Virginia rat. The North Carolina car moved on the uh, North Carolina rat. And they punished them. You know what I mean? I mean, they punished them something so vicious, both of them had to be airlifted. Like I said, that's something I'm going to teach you about. Airlift is when you're hitting the vital organ so bad that the local hospital can't even take care of you, you know what I mean, or save your life. So they got to fly you somewhere. So, I mean, they might they might fly you, you know what I mean, to Chicago from Pennsylvania. You know what I mean? They might fly you to uh, Detroit. They might fly you to Ohio. But they fly you to the nearest hospital that specializes in the organ that you got punctured by these prison knives. So if this is what you young is trying to do to run the streets, you do what you do. You know what I mean? But like I said, you know, that's called soft pressing. They were soft pressing them for them to be allowed to live until dudes got tired of it and couldn't take it no more. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's the way it is. I just wanted to give you that one, man, about how, you know, rats get harbored and how they got to pay to stay. You know what I mean? And I guess they had no problem doing it. Picture paying another man to stay on a prison compound. You in prison, you know what I mean? During 20, 30 years, you know, until they could tell to get it down. Every time they go back and tell, they get a time cut. You know what I mean? Just picture that, man. You know? So, you know, it is what it is, man. But just know that. Make sure you stick by the code, man. If you think you're tough enough to hustle, you know my motto. Cop the shirt at aroanharlem.com if you think you're tough enough to hustle. You know what I mean? aroanharlem.com. And don't forget, make sure you cop the book, Aroan Harlem. You know what I mean? At aroanharlem.com. But I just wanted to bring you up to speed and tell you about how they be harboring the rats, man, and why a lot of people, you know, don't be wanting to join the, you know, um, uh, the Muslims in prison and take their shahada because they look at it like you harboring these rats. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, dog. You know what I mean? But, you know, welcome to the penitentiary. Hi guys, how are you? And this is my sister-in-law, Diana, another partner. Um, I just ask that you come support our minority-owned business. We serve Asian fusion Caribbean cuisine, and we have a beautiful restaurant located on the Nautical Mile in Freeport, New York. And we're asking that you come, check us out, and also make sure to tune in to Mecca Audio TV. Nah. Cheers, 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 the crime, 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 the crime,
Ken of 26 yeah. He back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift Trust. You stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully, posse and put it in home uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom back. Drop the book, you should go and get it An Instagram page and a YouTube, you could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin uh -huh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the ninth. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper den. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust downs. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth, them. Could they the truth, them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.